Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me today. I've recently been contacted by Arteza, which is an art supply company, asking if I would be able to look at some of their products and give a review. And I was so excited whenever I was contacted. What I've got to share with you today is a look at how I was able to use and what my opinion is on the Arteza Real Brush Pens. Here's a look at what I was sent. It's a set of 48 Arteza brush pens. I have many different reactions to this particular project. All of them are honest and sincere. My overall opinion is that as long as they are not compared to another product, then they are a, something really great and enjoyable. If one product is compared to another product, then we don't always have an unbiased opinion. So I used these and I found lots of different ways. In fact, I created three different projects in order to demonstrate how they work in different ways. Here's a quick look at the projects that I created. And as you can see, they all give a really different look. So I'll have a very quick glimpse into what these projects entail and how I use the Arteza brush pens. And then in the following days, there's going to be a series of detailed video instruction on each one of these cards. I'll go in depth, in depth and in detail on how I created every single one of these. It's going to be a lot of fun and I hope that you enjoy it and get lots of information. If you're looking for my overall opinion, then yes, I do recommend the Arteza Real Brush pens. As I said, it's because if you don't compare them to any other product, do they stand up on their own? And the answer has got to be yes for me. I did like them and I'd love to show you exactly how I formed my opinion. Let's take a look now. The set of Real Brush pens that Arteza sent to me contains 48 different pens or 48 different colors. All of the colors are listed on the back, which is a nice go-to, and each pen is in its own slotted tray. There's also a water brush that's included, and in fact, I found if I used the water brush that they sent instead of a water brush that I had on hand, I had much better results with all the projects that I tried. On each one of the pens, it has a clear cap, and the tip of each pen is made from real bristles, from not a felt tip, but it's actually like a paintbrush. The color is notated as well as the number, and on the very end of each one of the pens, it has a estimated color of what that pen is going to look like. I tried a few different watercolor papers and Bristol paper and regular cardstock, even vellum, and I found that each one of them worked very uniquely with these pens. So you can see that they have a very long tip. It can be controlled to be very thin or really large and the color flows out really nicely. When mixing two colors together, then it would not be a problem to go back in with your water brush that they provide and blend everything together. In fact, it blends out nicely. I did find that if I used wet on wet instead of wet marker onto dry paper, that I had much better results. So I'm going to just draw a simple shape here and fill it in with water and then show exactly how this blends out. So I did a very thin line on the left and I'm doing another thin line on the right and just showing exactly how the color will bleed out and blend out to fade. I liked it and I found that if I used less water then the pens really reacted in a much better way. 
if by chance the pen absorbs any of the water that's from what you've added to the paper, then just draw off on the side, you know, kind of scribble off, and it gets the water off, and then you have a, a flow of pure ink once again. So I'm adding a couple of stamped images. I used some stays on jet black, and I would like to show exactly how well they blend together in a controlled area. I can get a really nice thin or a very nice heavy contoured line. So here's just a few concentric lines together to show how easily it is to draw with them. And then here's a rough leaf. And I like having the control over these that I can get a really thin line. They also wouldn't be too bad for hand lettering, although it would, control, it would require absolute control over the tip because there's no long felt tip to lean on there. So here is that same Bristol paper and I'm using the wet on wet watercolor technique and came up with this flower. I added the ink by scribbling onto a clear block and picking it up with the water brush. Now let's move on to a piece of watercolor paper with the same stamped image. I've switched over to some pinks so that I could get a feel for all the different colors and I am finding that the wet on wet makes it much more easy for me to blend out in the way that I am comfortable with. I can see using these markers that are the colors pair together so well but I can see using them in a way that just color in your full petal with the light color and go back in with a dark petal as I'm doing here and that might be the look you that that you want to do and then just kind of blend them together with the water brush but what I'm most comfortable with in my crafting is the wet on wet watercolor technique so you can see that there is quite a bit left on the brush and I can get a really nice deep color and a really nice color that's very light and airy on the left is the Bristol paper and on the right is the watercolor paper and I am happy with both ways. The Bristol paper reacted a little bit easier than the watercolor paper though. So I've tried a lot of different colors here on this flower and just kind of went crazy with it just to see what I could do. I did notice that the colors, some of them are a little bit grainy and that's okay because it gives a natural look. So let's try something totally different. I have heat embossed that same flower image from Hero Arts onto a piece of vellum and set it with some silver heat embossing powder. Now I'm using blues and I have to admit that I absolutely love the blues in this set. I used one blue and did not do the wet on wet. I just scribbled down into the shaded area of the petal and moved the color out towards the tip of the petal. I did one light blue and then after I colored the whole flower I went back in with that dark royal blue and I just love the results on vellum. I tried them another way as well and that's with the ink smushing technique. I'm using a piece of freezer paper here as my non-porous surface and this is a, the back side of that piece of watercolor paper. And I'm doing different colors and adding the ink in different increments. That's the way that I like to do ink smushing. I'll start with my lighter colors and work my way up to the darker. And here's two different examples. And the ink actually lifts up pretty well too after you put some water droplets and pick up. I hope that this review has given you some information that you can find useful. As I said, my overall opinion is that I do think that these art pens will stand up on their own. As long as you don't compare them to the Zig markers or anything that's in that medium, because they also have their unique properties. But the Arteza brush pens are a lot of fun to use, and I'm coming up with even more ideas on what I can do with them. There's 48 different pens in here, so 48 different color possibilities lots of color combinations. Be sure to come back and join me for the rest of this week as I give the projects 
All three of them will be in videos that are detailed, and you'll see these pins in much more detailed action. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day!